Hey there, BookTube. Noah. Everyone who reads it must converse as the channel. I was uh, watching a ongoing series from Bookish and Rambling Raconteur that, and I'll have them linked in the description box. They, they're doing a kind of series where not to start with authors, right? Where not to start with a certain author. And the, instantly, these kind of things come to mind of like people starting uh, their infinite jest <laughs> read having read nothing else by David Foster Wallace. They don't know what, what David Foster Wallace's style is like or what he does as an author. And they go straight for infinite jest, which is just insanity, you know? <laughs> I mean, you can do it, of course, right? So, and I will preface this by saying, look, do what you want to do. If you want to read a book, I mean, you know, read it. And it doesn't matter uh, wh whether it's the most effective by what metric, uh, you know, way to get into an author. I didn't start with uh, the book that books that I'm going to suggest today to start with. I didn't know. Um, I will let you know where I did start with and and why I don't suggest that. But, of course, you know, everybody's different. And, you know, starting reading one uh, book by a certain author, it does not necessarily going to turn you off to an author that you otherwise would like or vice versa. Make you like an author that, that you wouldn't like, right? I mean, it just is what it is. Different uh, books and different strokes for different, different folks, right? All right, so uh, this is Where Not to Start with Thomas Pinchon. And... I will st uh, preface this right here by saying that I have read every Thomas Pinchon except for Mason and Dixon. And Mason and Dixon is the final that I've kind of left. Um, I hear it's amazing. I hear it's awesome. It is a period piece and I can't wait to get to it, but I will not be able to speak to that. But at any rate, um, it is not necessarily a place you should start either um because mason and dixon is very very uh, uh has its own vernacular has its own thing going on and one thing that needs to be understood about thomas pinchon is everything he does is very very different than everything else pinchon is a master a complete master at writing and so all of his novels his efforts are different than any other effort that he has. You can see themes, of course, themes that run through, and uh, aspects of the writing, how it's written, is, is only Pinchon could do that, you know. Very, very beautiful, very poetic, very sprawling, very uh, laser-focused sometimes on things that you just could never, uh, you know, you, you wouldn't pull out yourself. So what prompted this first and foremost is where not to start with Thomas Pinchon that I see people say that they want to read, but they have never read any Pinchon before is Gravity's Rainbow. You should never <laughs> start a uh, Pinchon with Gravity's Rainbow. Uh, Gravity's Rainbow is an amazing book and an, an a mind-blowing work that is unique. I mean, there's nothing else like Gravity's Rainbow. And there it is, but it is meant to be this uh, very complex, very uh, fragmentedly wild, psychedelic, um, and at some points, unbelievably trudging, just trudging through some of this. You know, and it's meant to be like that. There is so much to this work um, that it would be hard to even say, uh, you know, succinctly what goes on in this book. It's it's an amazing epic work, and everybody has heard of Gravity's Rainbow, but this is not where you start. Okay, this is not where you start with with uh, Thomas Pinchon. Uh, there is so many. I had like four false starts on this book before I read it, because I did want to read this, you know, this is, read this first, and um, it, it just didn't happen. So where did I start with Thomas Pinchon? Well, I started at the beginning. I started with his first published work, 
which is V. And I don't re recommend starting with V either. This is one of the few authors that I would say uh, that starting with his first stuff, which is V, The Crying of Lot 49, Slow Learner, his collection of short stories, and Gravity's Rainbow is not where you want to start with Thomas Pynchon, with the exception of The Crying of Lot 49. And why is because The Crying of Lot 49 is Thomas Pynchon's lightest effort as far as size. This Harper Perennial Edition is 151 pages. 152. So, 152 pages, and you will get a great idea of how Thomas Pynchon writes, what his kind of thing is, um, what you can expect as far as digressions and these sprawling, beautiful uh, images and sentences. And, mm, I mean, it's amazing. And also the kind of unknown, paranoia-ridden, uh, very counterculture stuff, um, even pseudoscience, uh, pseudoscientific uh, things that he brings out in all, all almost all of his novels. Uh, you will get a good sense of this kind of thing. Uh, secret, secret societies, um, conspiracy. Thomas Pynchon loves this kind of stuff. And, and it just, and it just flows almost, almost unseen through his, through his novels. Um, but The Crying of Lot 49 is a good place to start. But, um, not, I would say not the best place to start, but it is a good place to start. And it, and it is the place to start, uh, that you will hear from most people. But his first stuff, V, is a very, very fragmented work. It is his first book, his first published work. And that's where I started. That's the first thing that I read. And I loved it. I mean, I really love uh, Thomas Pynchon. But V is not a very cohesive story. And it is very fragmented, like I said, but very character-driven as well. And, and you get a lot of good. There's a lot to like about V, that's for sure. And it is an amazingly strong debut novel. But um, it is it is just so strange um, in the way that it is written and things like this. And all of this, his first four novels here are very, very, um, you know, very, very stylized to Pinchon's individual style. So... Feel free to go where you want, but I don't recommend any of the four novels, especially not Gravity's Rainbow. And this is the second, uh, maybe one of the only uh, authors that I know of that I would say, uh, you know, you don't start at the beginning of their, of their, uh, their ovier, you know. After Gravity's Rainbow, though, he wrote uh, Vineland. Vineland is an awesome book, and Vineland is a, a very uh, good place to start. It's a very um, <laughs> it's a very interesting narrative, and you get caught in Vineland, right? <laughs> um, Vineland is a story that the the bad guy, <laughs> you know, like the bad guy is unseen. Um, for, for a lot of it. And the characters are over the top and amazing. And there is some very awesome situational humor in this book. Pinchon is very, very funny. Um, the main thing in person that you don't see in this book until later on and, and then very, very seldomly is one of the main characters. Zoid is a aging hippie and his wife has gone missing her name is uh freesy and freesy everybody loves freesy everybody is in love with freesy there and there is a horrifying kind of government official who's like almost a black ops kind of uh military guy who is obsessed with 
Zoid's wife. There is a an American ninja who was trained by a a a a, a, a group of monks in the Rockies. They a transplant from the Himalayas over here in the Rocky Mountains. Uh, and and she is a badass, just a total badass. Vineland is a great place to start. And any of the later works, um, Inherent Vice, Mason and Dixon, Against the Day, and Bleeding Edge. That is, that they're, they're great places to start. And I wouldn't shy you away from starting on any of them, except for maybe Mason and Dixon, because um, it is very, very you know, unique. Pinchon actually like created his own um, 1800s vernacular for writing this thing. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's great, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, it's great, I'm sure. So, uh, like I said, you can't go wrong with starting wherever you want to start. And so, what is, now where is the best places to start, right? Um, if I could give just the flip side of this where not to start and tell you where you should definitely start. Um, I've already said The Crying of Lot 49 because it is just succinct and it does give you a good idea of what you're in store from, from Pinchon. But the later Pinchon novels, um, I think are a better place to start personally for a number of different reasons. His last uh, published novel, Bleeding Edge, because it is a period piece set in the latter 1990s in New York. So it is a period piece that many of us have um, experience with who are alive today on this earth. <clears throat> so um, a lot of pinch on stuff is period pieces. And Bleeding Edge is a period piece for, for a more modern period where a, a lot of people that are alive have some experience with this uh, setting and the people and things like that. Uh, another great place to start is Inherent Vice because uh, it is a straightforward kind of narrative. It, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> Pinchon is crazy. And there is so many characters in Pinchon novels and they, and they just kind of like, like a, I heard it uh, compared to like a vaudeville show, um, how Pinchon will roll, you know, the, the, a set of characters out on stage and have them doing their thing. And then, and then, and then on to the next, you know, but everything, uh, everything works in a Pinchon novel on such a high level. It's amazing writing. And, to keep your bearings on an inherent vice, which is a private investigator story. I look at it something like a private investigator noir mixed with fear and loathing in Las Vegas. That's what <laughs> inherent vice is like. And um, there is a movie made not long ago uh, by Paul Thomas Anderson by the same name where he in adapted this book to a movie. So that can... Uh, serve to help you kind of keep your bearings straight, things like that, if you uh, want. The movie is very well done. Um, of course, it only lightly touches on ma many of the connective threads that are in this book because you got to keep a movie uh, watchable on, in a watchable time frame, right? And then, last but not least, the, the last pinch on that I read is in is against the day and i do recommend starting with against the day if you're not going to be um intimidated by the size this is a beast this copy right here is <clears throat> um a, a 1084 pages and it is very very uh amazing but this is thomas pinchon does genre and not one genre he does all genres. Every This is like five novels in one, set in one world, set in one place. Uh, not in one place, but set in one, one earth at one time period. 
all the and you get five different stories and they all are told in their own genre there's a western hardcore there is a sci-fi that is kind of a a jolly <laughs> fun as hell and wild adventure sci-fi uh the chums of chance this uh kind of a uh, prepubescent boys club that is on an airship. They're awesome. I mean, it's awesome. And then there's a coming of age story, Dolly and Dolly Rideout and her dad. And um, there is a noir. There is uh, the noir of Lou Bassnight and his investigations. Very, very interesting and cool. And then there is hardcore, um, I want to say erotica or, 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 or kind of smut novel with Cyprian and his psychological, uh, kind of a psychological, uh, exploration, you know, is, is what it is. It's wild. It is wild and it's so good, but this is super readable is the thing and how and why i say readable is because it's the narrative is is it's just storytelling it's storytelling on the highest level against the day very very good so i hope you guys got some ideas on where not to start and then where to start because thomas pinchon is is one of the greatest writers in the history of literature and i hope in my heart of hearts, that he has another novel or two that uh, we will have one day, maybe three. Who knows? You know, uh, the way that Pinchon is, we, ne we never know what to expect. And he is still alive, as far as we know, kicking it. Very reclusive author. So I hope we get something more and enjoy your journeys. Let me know what you think and uh, see you on the next one, book two. Bye bye.